creative continuity. We bring the convention to you. C2E2 2015. I'm here with Doug Walker. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't what have What exactly to. got you started on your journey? Uh, you know, I want, I studied film and I didn't end up going that route because I didn't think my personality would match sort of the Hollywood personality you need. So I decided to become an illustrator, but then I sort of did this YouTube stuff as a hobby. Uh, started doing like five second movies and uh, uh, Nostalgia Critic, of course, and a bunch of sketches. And they were really gaining in popularity. People were coming around and they kept watching the videos and the audience was getting bigger and bigger. And eventually a guy came along named Mike Mashad who was starting a new business called Channel Awesome and said, you can make a living at this. Wow, I can give wow. you a website, I can uh, put together a business plan and I can make it where you can actually make a living at this. And this is at a time when nobody was making a living at this. So wow. uh, he did all that and I've been doing it ever since. And it's amazing. Where does your inspiration to come up with your creative characters come about? Uh, it's different places. It has to be something where I know I can do a lot of the character. I can't just run out of ideas like the second video. And with Nostalgia Critic, I love playing jerks. Uh, bad guys are always the most fun to play. Right, so, they are. Uh, he's leveled out a little bit, but um, I also always love movie reviews. I love watching Cisco and Eber, and I love reading reviews. And uh, the funniest ones are always the negative ones. So I figure if he does nothing but see really bad shows and movies from his past, it would make sense, and from the past, because so many of the shows and movies we grew up with, we had the nostalgia goggles, and they don't hold up as well as we thought they did, so it's great to have a character that feels betrayed by it. It was funny because uh, it came from a lot of other people, a lot of other producers, who were doing either similar stuff or doing their own thing, and we thought should get an audience. Mm -hmm. So we had people like uh, Louis Lovehog, who does Linkara or uh, Joe Vargas who does Angry Joe, and we started to get them attention because they had these distinct characters and these distinct identities. And we sort of figured when we do our an yearly anniversary of mm -hmm. the website that we would bring them all out and we shoot something together. The first one was just like a quick little brawl. It didn't really have much of a story or anything. And then the second one was sort of this giant waste of time where we invade a micronation and it had no point. And everyone just got bigger and bigger and we started to put like a story to it. and characters and identities got fleshed out even more and wow. it just turned into this big deal uh, and it was just so much fun to do and they look great and they're uh, they're just such a great bunch of people to work with in terms of like other stuff with our producers we've done some big crossovers and there are a few more that we have planned uh, but we're also looking for maybe kind of like a big crossover in the near future uh, we don't know exactly what project to do it with but it's been a while since we've done one of the anniversary movies so we figure maybe like a big crossover review be kind of like a nice way to uh, level that out. When we start off this feud, because uh, some of the people when I started off were saying we were very similar, uh -huh. I figured rather than get angry at that, use it, have fun with it. That and I smart. started calling him out saying, nerd, you keep your fans <laughs> under control and such. And people got so angry and they got so wow. pissed off, which is great. That's exactly what you want. You want people to get really, really passionate about it. So when they started talking about it, I sort of contacted the guy, James Rolf, and I said, hey, is it cool that you just know this is not real, I'm not really angry and stuff, and he's like, oh, no, 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 I know it's fake, I know it's all a joke, and uh, uh, yeah, maybe we can do something with this, and we just sort of start talking back and forth how we can keep this feud going, because we didn't think anyone at the time ever did that online, like this fake feud between two characters, mm -hmm. and uh, we just pushed it as far as we could, and it's one of the most memorable things we've done. Now, the Nostalgia Critic, seems like he doesn't like anything. He likes a few things, he likes a few things. Not uh, Animaniacs. All right, all right, all right. How close is that, how close is he to Doug Walker? You know, when it started out, uh, there wasn't much of me in there. It was mostly just this really jerky, mean-spirited loser, which, okay, maybe there's a lot of me in there, but nevertheless, uh, it, it was very much uh, just the nth degree of like negativity and nastiness, mm -hmm. and after a while, it started to get a little old, and I realized if I really wanted to do this and make it last, I have to make him a little smarter and make him a little bit more relatable and human. So uh, he mellowed out a little bit and started talking more intelligent, but he's still an extremist. He'll still get angry at something that he legitimately does not like in a film. Uh, but where, when I see something I don't like in a film, yeah, I'll be a little annoyed, but I won't let it like 
ruin my day or anything like that. He'll right. let it like ruin his year, you know, <laughs> if he sees a really bad film. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of the big difference is that it is sort of the true opinions that I have, but it's pushed to like the nth degree. You can find me on channelawesome.com. You can also find me on YouTube. So we're signing out, The Walker, kind of awesome. Al Gain here, Creative Continuity at RetroCon with James Wolf. Yeah. Well, what got you started becoming an angry video game nerd? Pretty much started uh, when YouTube started, so it was just very early on, uh, in the early days of YouTube. And I guess if you really go back, it started since I was a kid. I mean, because that's, that's where it started for all of us. When we were kids, we played all these games. Mm -hmm. So uh, I used to record myself a little bit when I was playing, but that wasn't the main thing I was doing. I was mainly uh, trying to make movies. There's any kind of art. I think movies was the kind of art that I settled on because that's like, uh, movies are like every art combined. It's visual, right, it's right. audio, it's everything. Um, video games is just kind of like a hobby. So of course, every now and then I'd record myself playing games and commenting on them and stuff. And uh, I had no idea that all these years later that would become such a big thing. So uh, when YouTube started, that was when the, well, there were three nerd episodes out at that time. The first two were just on VHS. They would just collect dust in my closet. But once YouTube came out, I made a third one. Was like, okay, let's we'll post this online now, see what people think. And then it with each one after that, just got bigger and bigger. A few friends only saw the first two, which was uh, Simon's Quest and Jekyll and Hyde. Those okay. were like the pilot episodes, if you will. But uh, once YouTube started, we did the Karate Kid episode, and uh, people liked it. They thought it was funny. And then with each one, it just became a bigger and bigger uh, crowd that was seeing them. So it was kind of surreal. I didn't know so many other people remembered those same games right, growing right, up. Right. You transitioned into a, a full-length film that you yeah. did. I believe it was last year. You showed it here at RetroCon we last did, year. We did, yeah. Uh -huh. now, yeah. How was that response? Oh, it was amazing. It's really like a crowd reaction kind of movie. So when you see it with the live audience, and everybody's like laughing at all the right parts. and. It just the crowd was just amazing. Every mm. every time we show it, it's the same, same kind of energy, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, I like doing video game conspiracy type things. You know, things that are fiction. Usually, I like making up made up things to go along with video games. And the story of E.T. and the landfill it was just perfect for a movie, and the movie was perfect for the nerd. So it's just the kind of thing that just uh, was perfect for that character to go through and make it into a big adventure thing. So, and, and it combined everything that I love. So I got movies, I got to make a movie, but it's video games also, mm -hmm. it's the nerd. So it kind of just it fills every every uh, you know niche that it could. All right, you, you're yeah. quite the conspiracy theorist too. Oh yeah, for, for fun though, not for real, but no, like fun for ones, real? yeah. Oh, okay, uh -huh. okay. Well, yeah. what, what was one of the biggest conspiracies that you feel that you uncovered or stumbled upon. Oh, it must have been like that one, the whole E.T. landfill thing is a famous one. But uh, I, I guess if you go with real, uh, the Sword Quest one, if you know about like the treasures with the Sword Quest game, mm -hmm. real life hidden treasures, and we still don't know where those treasures are to this day. But uh, the conspiracy ones, like the ones I like to make up is like that Mario 3, the game is satanic and it's it's a product of the devil. <laughs> and it's it, because the game's so good, it's a sin. So um, we, uh, broke it all down where like there's subliminal messages in the game and stuff like that. So that's just stuff I like to do for fun, you know. Right, now you also did work with Doug Walker and a number yeah. of people. How did that collaboration come about? Oh, uh, when we first uh, met Doug Walker, well, uh, he uh, was doing just some videos, I guess, and, and was uh, we just kind of crossed over and he would start doing videos about me and I started doing some back to him. It was just very natural just how it came about and then we eventually was like, you know, it'd be really funny if we just like had a, a fight scene between the nerd and the critic. So we did that, and people liked it. So uh, and since then we've been great friends. So what's it like working with Lloyd Kaufman? Oh, and he's he's funny. Yeah. yeah? Uh huh. He's hilarious. Um, yeah, uh, he's great because uh, the nerd movies kind of in the style of the trauma movies a lot, and you know he paved the way for independent filmmaking. Right. And, you know, for like over 30 years now, and. Uh, um, so uh, what Cinemassacre does and every, everybody today making those kind of films is, you know, owes a lot to Troma. Um, but yeah, he uh, saw the trailer to the nerd movie and uh, uh, somebody from Troma uh, connected us. And then uh, since then we've been, uh, you know, we always do stuff together. 
So whenever he's in town, he lets me know. The Return of Nukem High uh, came out, it's volume one, and then Return of Nukem High volume two, so it's like Kill Bill kind of, it's the two volumes. <laughs> but I have a, a cameo in the second one. Uh, right. So we, we trade cameos a lot, because Lloyd has a cameo in the nerd movie. I'm trying to make uh, more movies, but the shows I have going on the web series, uh, the other one's Board James, and that's mm -hmm. the, the board game show. And I've been putting a little bit more cinematic stuff into that, especially lately. So that's a lot about, um, you know, there's a storyline going on with it. And um, and then I there's a show, You Know It's Bullshit, which is uh, about just things that are bullshit. Mm -hmm. Just random everyday life stuff. And then uh, uh, usually trivial things, which makes it funnier. And then Monster Madness is all horror movie reviews we do every October. Uh, I do top 10 videos. Right now we do the simple, uh, I guess, sort of let's play videos, where it's me and Mike. It's James and Mike Mondays. We do it every Monday. And that is uh, just playing games with no script or anything and just seeing what happens. Because the nerd videos, they're all planned out. You know, I, I uh, am very uh, uh, perfectionist about the nerd videos. I get them all right. I want to get the, the commentary right, do a lot of research for them, wow. hours and hours of gameplay, cut it all together. But, but James and Mike Mondays is just kind of like the loose version, just two guys sitting on a couch playing a game and what you see is what you get. Best place is cinemasker.com. That'll connect you to the YouTube, the Facebook, everything else kind of, you know, that'll point to everything else. Nerd signing out. That's right. You are under my power. Look into the hypnotic eye. Time now to enter Mr. Lobo's domain. That's me, I'm Mr. Lobo host of Cinema Insomnia. I've been hosting late night horror films for over 15 years. We like to say they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. And when I'm not here at RetroCon buying broken action figures and used He-Man bed sheets, I uh, have a television series that I filmed that you can watch on my new channel, OSI 74, which is uh, kind of like a TV channel, like a weird UHF, station from an alternate dimension. Do you even know what a UHF, ask your dad what a UHF channel is. But it's gonna be a lot of weird stuff. There's gonna be cartoons, there's gonna be movies, there's going to be strange TV shows, mysteries, conspiracies, uh, a lot of weird content coming together. OSI 74 is the channel. You can see it on OSI74.com and uh, hope to see you there. How got you started being an angry video game nerd? Uh, shitty games. <laughs> are we swearing or are we not swearing? <laughs> uh, a little PG. Okay. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> it's a little PG. It's a little PG, it's a little PG yeah. <laughs> it's Harold Gant with Doug Walker. And before I sign out, I gotta say this. Thank you for this interview. Absolutely. You have inspired the man behind the camera to do what we're doing now. There's a man behind the camera? Paul, Paul, can you put your fingers in front? There oh we go. Oh my God! <laughs> I thought we were just talking to a briefcase with like a cone on it. I didn't know that thing was actually on. Exactly. I take back like half of what I said, okay? <laughs> Only half though. You know who you are.